Well, hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. We have more electricity-related words today. There's a whole bunch of them. There's like, they only have two or three lines each, give or take. And there's, so we're going to learn about so many things in this episode. Aren't you excited? I don't know what my sound effect is going to be. I have no idea. The first word in this episode is electric organ. And, of course, if you listened to the previous episode, you heard me talk about the electric eel, which is capable of giving a severe shock with its electric organ. What's its electric organ? (laughs) The electric organ is two words. Noun from 1773. I guess maybe that's when we learned that this thing exists in animals. Humans don't have one, do we? Um, this is not the musical instrument. Do do little bit boob do do. That's not how an organ sounds. This is a specialized tract of tissue, as in the electric eel, in which electricity is generated. How does this work? Let's put a link in the show notes for electric organ. Do sharks have this? I think there are some sharks who have something like hammerheads have something in their facial area where they can sense electricity or something coming from you know maybe maybe fish hiding in the sand or something i don't know if that's the same thing as electric organ but i think this is fascinating and how did evolution make this happen what 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 should the sound effect be let's go Because the next word is electric ray, and that's how I think an electric ray sounds. It's not like the sound that I made yesterday, which was zzzz. That's that's too uh, stereotypical. We need to do something a little bit different. Electric ray, noun, from 1774. I wonder if it's related to electric organ, because they were only one year apart. Any of various round-bodied, short-tailed rays... Of warm seas with a pair of electric organs. All right, we found another one that has electrical stuff in it. Electric ray. Not the electric eel. It's electric ray. And they have a pair of these. So that's cool. Maybe they're on their fins. I don't know. Don't touch an electric ray. How are you supposed to know which one's an electric ray? Do they have a little lightning bolt symbol on them? The family name is torpedinidae. Torpedinidae. Sort of looks like it starts with the word torpedo, which is interesting. Hmm. Maybe it has to do with their shape. So obviously I was thinking electric ray would be just like a laser or something, but no, it's an animal. (sighs) Next is electrification. Electrification is a noun from 1748. I didn't do my mouth warm-ups, so it's it was hard to say electrification. This is, number one, an act or process of electrifying, and two, the state of being electrified, because it, then it's electrif- it's been through electrification. The process of making something electric is electric, but this word, this word, I hate you word, electrification. The next word is electrify. This is a, looks like it's just a transitive verb from 1745. Makes sense. Electrify was first. Three years later, we got electrification. Similar idea. Number 1A. To charge with electricity. Putting a charge of electricity into a thing. There's so many different ways that this word can be formed. I have to think about how how do you, uh, where, where do you emphasize the syllable and all that. So, you got electricity, you want to put it into a thing, maybe like an electric eel, and then you are electrifying it. No. You don't, you don't electrify an electric eel. Nature, evolution, electrified the electric eel. How did the electric eel get electrified? It's like one of those fables. 1B1, to equip for use of 
electric power. 1b2, to supply with electric power. 1b3, to amplify electronically, and the thing that we are amplifying is possibly maybe music. Yeah, you want to electrify your music. Oh, that was fun when we electrified our music. We were able to produce a whole new range of sounds. The electric harpsichord being used in heavy metal. Number two. To, to excite intensely or suddenly, as in the news electrified the nation. Has there been any news that has electrified the nation recently? Well, by the time you hear this, maybe there will have been some news. I'm recording this on August 22nd at 7.06 a.m., and uh, what, what has electrified us? I don't know. Well, we had the, um, two weeks ago, we had the, uh, the, the fire in Hawaii that kind of electrified a lot of people. Not literally. Let's not go that way. Um, anything else that has electrified us? I'm trying to think of the news. I'm hearing about climate change every day. I listen to all these, you know, news or science podcasts, and uh, the cl- climate change comes up in virtually every single one of them, and oh, this morning I was listening to a, a couple, actually, that talked about it, and it's just so s- frustrating and sad, and the coral reefs are dying, and it's been going on for a, decades, but it's getting worse, and I feel, it just feels like everything's just a lost cause. How did we get on this topic? Yes, that, that's, that news electrified me. It electrified me to to do something. I don't know what to do. I do this. There's other things I want to do, but I don't know. All right, let's move on. Let's go. <sighs> Electroacoustics. One word. I think this sounds fascinating. Uh, it is a noun from 1927. A science that deals with the transformation of acoustic energy into electric energy, or vice versa. So what I'm doing right now, the sound that I am making with my uh, vocal cords and lungs and diaphragm and mouth and teeth and tongues and all that, uh, th- that is acoustic because it is a, it's a physical thing that's happening. Uh, and then it goes into this microphone, which of course if you're on Patreon you can see, uh, it goes into the microphone, and there's a, a thing in there that's going to vibrate as I talk into it. That's acoustic, but then it gets turned into, goes into electrical signals into this wire, into the recorder over here, and that's when it turn, It goes from acoustical to electronical. Are those the right words? I don't think so, but you get it. Uh, or vice versa, electric to acoustic. Uh, something electric, and it gets turned... Um, what would be an example of that exactly? Di- well, uh, you know, CD, you play a CD, that's digital, or an MP3, and then you put it into a speaker. A speaker is acoustic. It's a, something that's physically vibrating. Would that be an example of electric to acoustic, maybe? Electroacoustic is also an adjective. I, I think, I think, I mean, you can, you can create audio in a purely electronic digital form, just on their computer, synthesizers, those sorts of things. Um, but um, but uh, a, lot, a lot of the time, it's uh, electroacoustical, I think. Electroanalysis. One word. Noun from 1903. Chemical analysis by electrolytic methods. When are we going to see electrolytic... Who? Let's see. Let's see. In uh, not the next episode, but the one after that, we'll see electrolytic. What is that stuff? So, uh, where were we? Electroanalysis. The chemical analysis by electrolytic methods. Electroanalytical is an adjective. So, what is the chemical? Your I don't understand this. I don't know this. Maybe we'll learn more in a couple of episodes. When we get to electrolytic. I don't know what this sound is anymore. Electrocardiogram, or just cardiogram. Noun from circa 1904. 
what was the what would did we, we yeah the previous one electroanalysis was 1903 i don't know if these are connected in any way but they're one year apart in in uh, american english electrocardiogram is the tracing made by an electrocardiograph also the procedure for producing an electrocardiogram is also the electrocardiogram Am I reading these words right? Yes. So that leads us right into the next word. Electrocardiograph with a G-R-A-P-H at the end. It's very frustrating that we have two words that are very similar or, or suffixes. I want to talk about those. Gram and graph. Is there a reason that they're so closely related or, or, or so closely uh, spelled? Or do they come from the same evolutionary uh grandparent uh or is it just a coincidence that they're in the same world they they're they're related uh and they're spelled very similarly too it's probably very confusing for people electrocardiograph is a noun from 1913 so that's nine nine years after electrocardiogram but the electrocardiogram is the tracing that's made by electrocardiograph. Hmm. Okay, this electrocardiograph is an instrument for recording the changes of electrical potential occurring during the heartbeat used especially in diagnosing abnormalities of heart action. Electrocardiographic is an adjective electrocardiographically that's a long word, that's an adverb, and electrocardiography, that is a noun. So, this is the thing, this is the, uh, yes, this is the instrument, I think that ECG, e e well, I've heard of EKG, right? Did we have that earlier? Uh, let's see, e e e e e k g. and I think it was using the German spelling, if I remember correctly. Um, where is the letter K. Who, when, when does K end up in the alphabet? Oh, here we go. Uh, e K G. Yes. Okay. So E K G is electrocardiogram or electrocardiograph. So either one. And yes, it's using the K for the German spelling electrocardiogram. So when you get an E K G, they put a thing. They put all these uh, electrodes. I think I had one once or twice. They put them around your heart area and other places to check your heart beat, see if it's a regular, weird, normal, splendid. Um, and then th when it uh, gets printed on a paper maybe or some other visual representation on a screen, that is the electrocardiogram. That is the tracing, the visual representation of it. And they can look at it. They can read it. Like, uh, like I'm reading the book here, they can read the electrocardiogram um, by seeing all the, the waves and they know it's normal. And then they say, oh, that doesn't look normal. I've never seen that before. You should go get that checked out by somebody. That's electrocardiogram, electrocardiograph. We might have more related. Uh, I'm not sure. But those two definitely go together. <laughs> Yes, electrocautery. So it starts with electro, and then we have C-A-U-T-E-R-Y, noun from circa 1884, cauterization of tissue by means of an instrument heated by an electric current. So cauterization, if you didn't listen to the previous episode, not the pre the, the very old episode when I talked about that, uh, that is essentially the process of having a, a wound of some kind and then putting heat on it so it basically burns it um, and then it's healed up fast. Maybe it's a, a thing that is not uh, healing well or healing quickly, whatever reason, you want to cauterize things. Um, I probably mentioned this before. I had my nose cauterized when I was little because I was getting all these nosebleeds. And so that they then they heat up this little thing and they stick it in your nose and it, you go, ah, that hurts. But it, then it's over quickly. Uh, so this is electrocautery is the process of doing that. But 
It's specifically electro because you are heating something with electricity. How did they do that before electricity? Well, they would probably literally let set something on fire or burn something so it was super, super hot, and then they would use that to cauterize. Uh, but these days with electricity, you can just send an electrical impulse a current into a thing and then it heats up that way. I think it's a lot more controlled and uh, probably safer. It's, it's getting real close to the previous sound effect. I gotta do something different. Here we have electrochemistry, noun from 1814. This is a science that deals with the relation of electricity to chemical changes and with the in the interconversion of chemical and electrical energy. Somehow electricity and chemical things are connected and changing together, and I can't tell you any more than that because I don't understand all that. I'm sure that if somebody explained it to me in a certain way, I'd be like, oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I can't think of an example off the top of my head. Electrochemical is an adjective, electrochemically is an adverb, and electrochemist is a noun. That is a very cool sounding job. What do you what do you do? I'm an electrochemist. I don't know what that means, but it sounds very cool. Uh, okay, I want to make sure that I haven't skipped anything because I have done that a couple of times recently. I think I'm good. There was something in parentheses that I wanted to make sure I mentioned. Did I skip it? Did I say it? I think we're okay. Eh, yeah. Next is electroconvulsive. Electroconvulsive. Not a thing that we need to joke about because I think I think if I know what it is, we'll we'll read it. Adjective from 1947 of relating to or involving convulsive response to electroshock electroshock that's going to be a few episodes from now so there's an example electroconvulsive shocks it still happens these days not as much as it used to in the 40s 50s 60s etc but this is the process of putting shock shocking the brain putting some things electrodes on the brain and shocking it um, to do something, to get, I don't, you know, they use it for various reasons. Um, I think that largely it's a thing that doesn't happen so much, but it does, does still happen. And it sounds like, you know, if it's still happening in the 21st century, then there must be some useful aspects of it for maybe certain people or certain, um, certain reasons. You know, not everybody needs this stuff. But then what happens, because you're getting your brain electrically shocked, you are going to convulse. And so those are electroconvulsive. Those are electroconvulsions? Would that be the right word? I think so. So something that's electroconvulsive, those are the shocks that you're getting there. Electroconvulsive shocks. Uh, like this, this next one is related. <sighs> Electroconvulsive therapy. Two words, noun from 1948. The synonym is just electroshock therapy. And yes, we'll get to that in a few words. A few episodes, not a few words. Electrocorticogram. Electrocortico. Cortica. Corti. Cortica. Corticogram. Yes, electrocorticogram. Noun from 1939. This is an electroencephalogram made with the electrodes in direct contact with the brain. An electroencephalogram. We're probably coming up to that soon. Uh, so this this is uh, probably what they use when they do this electroshock therapy. That's what it seems like to me. They've got electrodes in direct contact with the brain. Put it, put it all on the brain, and that is an electrocorticogram, and you're going to do some electroshock therapy. 
Um, I, uh, I think maybe we can hold off. I was going to say, I think we should put a link in the show notes. I mean, we could put it here too. For electroshock therapy, I think we need to learn more about that. So go check the show notes if you want to learn more about that. <sighs> Electrocute is next. The, the word cute is in there, but this is not at all a cute thing. I think most people would agree with that. This is a transitive verb from 1889. We talked a little bit about this in the previous episode with electric chair. Sorry, I have to scratch my nose because for some reason it gets very itchy and I don't know why. Electrocute, number one, to execute by electricity. And the person that you might be executing, it shows the example, a criminal. You might execute a criminal with electricity in the electric chair, and that is electrocute. Everybody's got opinions on uh, what, what, if this is a thing that should be done. I think this is a very not good way to go. I don't, you know, if, if somebody has to be killed in some way, I don't think electrocution is a good way to do it. Two, to kill by electric shock. Now, this obviously could be on purpose. Maybe you're trying to kill somebody with electric shock. Um, but also, uh, the, it, it can happen accidentally. Um, and I guess the thing is, there's electric shock. There's probably another word in here somewhere. Um, but I guess what it's saying is that the word specifically is related to death. That if you have been electrocuted, if you've got an electric shock so much that your heart stops and the electrocardiograph cannot read anything on your heart because it's not pumping anymore, then you have been electrocuted. You can't just say, oh, I got a little electric shock, a static shock. You can't say I was electrocuted because it seems like that the, the whole point of this word is that it's about death. Uh, because, look at the uh, the etymology, it's from the electra prefix plus the cute suffix. Is that a whole separate thing? I gotta go back and look. Um, as in, you know, the, the word execute. So they took the cute from execute, put it on electro, and then you, you, you're, you're executing somebody with electricity. That's where this word comes from. Now, I gotta do a quick little check at the uh the suffix if if it exists i don't remember if it did the suffix cute you can probably hear my fingers i'm just like i'm i'm going i'm going back page by page let's see is it this page no is it this page yes here is cute now is there a suffix cute i don't think there is so this this, so basically, they weren't like, oh, this suffix, we just throw this on the end of words and it means to, to death or murder or something. No, they just took it from the word execute, which will have probably its own etymology, and we will get to that at the end of the E's. But first, we got a ways to go. Oh, electrocution, that is a noun. <laughs> electrode, or just electrode. Noun from 1834, one, a conductor, this is not the person who's conducting the band or the person who's driving the train, this is something else, a conductor used to establish electrical contact with a non-metallic part of a circuit. So the, the conductor is the thing that is able to send the electrical signals through, the uh, metal is a conductor, we are conductors. Um, used to establish electrical contact with a non-metallic part of a circuit. So there's a part that's not metal, that's probably not a conductor. And then I guess the conductor, th this electrode, is a thing that can send, give that thing, that non-metallic thing, an electrical signal. I guess? Something? I don't know. Number two, an element in a semiconductor device as a transistor that emits or collects electrons or holes or controls their movements what is a hole h o l e s holes um it emits or collects electrons or holes i don't know what those are in this context 
<laughs> Electro deposit is next. This is one word, first form, noun from 1864. A deposit formed in or at an electrode by electrolysis. Electrolysis, um, but, but, but I just want to do a quick read through of what that is. Um, ah, something about, something about hair roots. Yes, you can get electrolysis to maybe remove hair. I was like, I know what this is. I just needed to read it for a second. So, electrodeposit is when there is electrolysis, uh, which is using electricity with an electrode. There is a deposit of something. What is deposited? I don't know. What? What? Hmm. Fascinating. What is deposited? I don't know what it is, but it's an electro deposit. I was thinking maybe this is like direct deposit. When you get a check from your job, go straight into your account electronically. That would be an electro deposit. <laughs> electro deposit, second form, transitive verb from 1882, to deposit as a metal or rubber by electrolysis. Now, this I don't think is when you're putting, uh, doing the hair removal. This is probably some other kind of electrolysis. Um, and so maybe, 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 now that I'm getting some more information, it seems like uh, the the first form of electro deposit is probably not about hair removal. It's probably about something else. So you're depositing something like metal or rubber. That would be an example of the electro deposit. Um, and uh, you're doing this with electrolysis, with an electrode, and I still don't understand any of the context of what we're talking about here. But we now know that it could be metal or rubber. Electrodeposition or deposition, that is a noun. <sniffs> Electrodermal is next. Electrodermal, one word, adjective from 1940, of or relating to electrical activity in or electrical properties of the skin. Yes, dermal, that's related to the skin. So, what is this of relating to electrical activity of the skin or electrical properties of the skin? I mean, you know, we, we, are, we can be conductors. You can send an electrical signal through the skin because we know that from, you know, just touching a thing and getting shocked or touching a person and getting shocked. Um... But electrodermal, how would you use this? So it's an adjective. You would use it to describe a thing. What is electrodermal? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you got to study it, maybe. Uh, but what would what would electrodermal be? Maybe we need to put a put a something something in the show notes for electrodermal. I'm trying to think of like what's the context here. I don't know. Okay, we got one more word. <laughs> Electro desiccation electro desiccation e l e c t r o d e s i c c a t i o n electro desiccation noun from 1919 the drying up of tissue by a high frequency electric current applied with a needle shaped electrode and it is called also fulguration F-U-L-G-U-R-A-T-I-O-N. Fulguration? Never heard of that word before. Electrodesiccation. The drying up of tissue by a high-frequency electrical current applied with a needle-shaped electrode. So you take an electrode that is shaped like a needle, and you apply it to a thing, tissue, and that's going to dry it up. What's the is this used in electrolysis maybe for hair removal? Where would you use this? Why would you use this? Who's using this? Electro desiccation. Yeah, I think of desiccation as like dead, done. It's been desiccated, ruined. So I guess that yeah, that makes sense. Uh, interesting. That's that's a very interesting one. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how it uh, how it's used in context. You know what? Where is this electrodesiccation happening? Okay, 
We need to pick a word of the episode. Yes, we do. We're going to pick a word of the episode. We had electric organ, electric ray, electrification, electrify, electroacoustics, electroanalysis, electrocardiogram, electrocardiograph, electrocautery, electrochemistry, electroconvulsive, electroconvulsive therapy, electrocorticogram, electrocute, electrode, electrodeposit, electrodeposit, electrodermal, and electrodesiccation. Oh, let's see. What? Which one? They're not, they're not jumping out at me. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to pick electric organ. I think that's a fascinating organ in a human, not a human, in a living thing. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? Real quick, let's look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Counting doesn't help. Um, I also thought like electrocute. I don't know. That's not a great one. Um, let's just pick electric organ as the word of the episode. If I had an organ, we could play some organ music. Uh, but there's no organ, and I don't know how to play it. Not really. Um, electro organ. Electro organ. Electric organ. It's the organ in your body that makes electricity. Oh, these are such weird songs. I don't know what they are. Electric organ, electric organ. You're sending out electricity. It's a weird, weird emphasis on those that word. Ah, I don't know, whatever. I did a little thing. It's fine. Can we talk about another movie that I watched? Modern Romance. What is this? I don't remember. Let's look it up. Why don't I remember what this movie is? Did it say the 70s? Hold on. Hold on a second. What? Oh, look. My Chrome is up to date. That's great. Thanks. Okay. Let's find what is this movie that I watched that I have no memory of at this moment in time. Oh, yes. I remember this movie. Albert Brooks, uh, who is... Uh, he's, he's definitely the main dude of this i think he did he write yep wrote directed also written by monica mcgowan johnson um he's a, he's an editor this is in the 80s the early 80s right uh 81 real early 80s um and it's re- him and his relationships and yeah he's like trying to get back with his girlfriend um it's a very very silly funny movie um modern romance so this is sort of his take on like what romance is like in 1981 so modern at the time it was modern we're 40 plus years away from this so it's very different but the thing that i noticed is that there are a whole lot of phone calls in this movie and so i think i don't know i think i counted like 16 20 some so many phone calls and I think that was part of what he was commenting on is like this is a this is an example of modern romance these days in the early 80s you got to be on the phone you got to call uh, uh um uh answering machines were part of that not voicemail answering machine with the little tape inside yeah so um it's it's yeah it's a fun interesting uh goofy movie um with uh and there's some there's some fun uh, film stuff because he's an editor, so like the, the the movie industry comes into it as well, which is very meta. Okay, that's it. That's the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening and watching. And this has been Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.